It's doing it's going. <laughs> okay. Hi, what's up? This is the 3D Camera Show uh, with Sam, Alicia, and Carlos. Um, Carlos isn't here right now because we are on vacation in Florida at my mother's. But um, we're going to show you right now um, how to load up a uh, duplex. This is a duplex stereo 120. Um, this is an Italian made stereo camera and this is a medium format camera. Um, it might not look like it because it actually has a very different design than every other medium format camera that is uh, in existence. Um, whereas a medium format camera will take large frames on a 120 roll of film, it'll uh, all other medium format cameras take it laterally. This actually has a vertical film travel. So the um, film travels up and down in the camera and um, these two lenses take a uh, set of uh, twin uh, stereo pictures on a roll of film that's traveling up and down. So you get a lot more um, frames, uh, stereo pictures out of a roll of film. And this will um, output a format that is basically a duplex format which is very similar, it's not exact, but it's very similar to the stereo realist style um, five per format um, if you're making stereo slides, etc., like that. And I just want to show you really quickly because we're loading up this camera with film to go out and take pictures at the beach and uh, by the pool. So uh, Sam, why don't you load up this camera for us with uh, 120 film? All righty. Here, I'll open this for you. So take the whole back off, the whole back. How do you take the back off? off. Show, show again. Do that, do, that, do that in detail for everybody to see. This has a little tiny flipper right here. This guy flips up and that flips light switch. Flips light switched up and it and it just pops right off the back. Mm -hmm. Let's see the interior of this. And we already have the take up spool. Yeah, so this has a take. Now, does the take up spool um, come out and you have to take it up again? Yeah, at the okay. end, but I always switch that as soon as I'm As done. soon as you do, because you're a responsible camera taker. Or, yes, I'm or, very or, or, or. responsible. Right. Like that. So Sam's going to go and load this up. I'm going to go and uh, do this with the camera. Da 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 da. So very I'm nice. Go for a little band here. And I just wanted to say really quickly that we are shooting this with a Red Hydrogen One stereo phone and in the uh, selfie mode, which takes a stereo selfie for a vertical. Um, portrait style and it is very excellent so far that we're using it we're just testing it out really for the first time um this week but anyway so this is how you're loading up this camera and so there's a little pulley outy tabby dealy now is that the correct terminology is that technical to pulley outy terminology dealy yeah, that's what i'm calling it that's what we're calling it okay sorry i'm trying to hold this as steady as possible there i go there we go and then See, I guess the slowmography film has some, some 120 spools have a little X kind of shaped. Um, and this does not. Jobby dealy there. And that just has a regular, like. This has just a ray of just a single. Like, notch like a there. flat. And as opposed to a Phillips head screwdriver type of. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good way to describe it. I think that Fuji was the one that invented that and it was this like big to or not they their whole thing was the easy load where they tapered the edge of the 120 spool ever so slightly mm -hmm. which i guess was a revolutionary thing at the time okay. but these i think are just more like okay so you are now loading up this medium format film into this medium format camera mm -hmm. so and feeding in the little tongue Jobby deal. It, it, it loads more or less like a regular media format camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just going to take a little bit of lead. And what type out. of film do we have in here, Sam? This is Lomography 120, um, or this is Lomography Color Slide X Pro 200, which they know, Lomography no longer makes apparently. I don't know what exactly this was when it was new. Um, I'm guessing it was some expired bulk loaded down from whatever. Maybe it was Agfachrome, maybe it was Ektachrome 200. Um, it was kind of an earlier Lomography product, um, and they were a little bit more funky with their film at the but time. But this is a Chrome, this is a Chrome... Uh... Yes. Now, they sell it as X-Pro, as cross-process film, I think by and large, because if you shoot it in E6, it probably doesn't produce the most true and realistic right. colors, but we don't care about that. Right. So I'm just going to, now that I've put a little bit of leader and it's nice and taut, I'm going to put the plate back on here. One thing to point out about this camera, the snap back in, the snap back in. no, 
Uh, one thing to point out about this camera that's very unusual that I thought was a problem at first, but it turns out most of them have this, is that the little film frame checker windows, there's one on top, one on bottom, and the idea is that you advance the film at first to the bottom um, to the yeah. bottom window, then you advance to the top using, I think it's using the 645 uh, frame numbers for you know, when you're dealing with more conventional single lens um, 120 cameras as different frame lines for different 120 formats. And I'm pretty sure it's using the 645 uh, numbers. But the idea is because we're using basically half of that image area even, um, you are shooting the bottom half of that frame, uh, effectively a pair of two frames on the bottom half of that frame kind of delineation, and then you're shooting the top half of it. So you put the numbers down here, and then you frame it. Again. Then you frame the next number sequence, and then you and then you wind it, shoot the next set up mm -hmm. there, um, and there you have it. Uh, but the weird thing about this camera is that unlike most cameras that have a little peephole type uh, frame counter on the back. This is just completely clear glass. Right. It, doesn't it doesn't have, have that ruby little window. red ruby window. Now, I thought at first that that was, oh, it was missing from this one, or it, the, the ruby fell out. And this is actually the second one of these cameras we've gotten. And uh, both of them have that. That's just the way it was designed. Right. So if you're uh, like worried about um, like uh, um, a light burning through into the back of your paper of the the film, uh, just put a piece of electrical tape over it. Yeah, or just electrical tape or gaff tape or paper tape, whatever. Anything to block the light out from these windows because it will burn through. If, if you leave it upside down in the sun on a sunny day, you will get um, burn through onto your images, right? Yep. Most and especially likely. if you're using a funkier lomography right. film, odds are the backing <laughs> paper is probably not going to be as light tight as on as on Kodak or whatever. Right. So why uh, do we wind up the frame? But here, so we just keep wind it, and we wind it. You want to wind it nice and slow. And when you, you wind this, you have to count this to so show show everybody. Well, you don't have to count it, but you just have to just wind it slowly because you can't rewind after the fact. Correct. Because with one twenty, you just have a take up spool, and then the film just spools onto that. You don't rewind it. Well, let me so see. Now that we see the window, yeah. Now that we see the start. Mm -hmm. Now I know to kind of slow it on down. And a it's a very, it's a, you, you really do have to look through it. It's not that clear, even though the windows themselves are clear. It's, it's, it's still something that's not very obvious when I'm looking at it straight away. It might have some glare on the, on the camera right now, what I'm shooting. So, so we just keep winding nice and slow because you don't want to waste your frames. Right. And then, oh, it says up. don't. Oh, don't think, just shoot. Don't think, just shoot. That's Lamography's um, little tagline. Yes, that's their cute little... 2000-something? Yeah. All right. Did that change? Is that still... I think they still... They still use that? Yeah, they're still encouraging people to not think. Yeah. Is, <laughs> you know something? I do enough thinking professionally as it is. There you go. So And even non-professionally. All those non-professional thinkers out there. Yeah, too many of them. Okay, so while Sam's um, really kind of excruciatingly winding this to oh, the... Oh, uh, here we go. So now we've got the we little countdown it. dots. All right, here we go. So, so let's there's... see what the countdown dots look like. So once you start seeing a little pair of dots or like well, on it's... different films, it'll be different uh, markings. Sometimes it's a line. Sometimes it's some dots. Show, wait, I need to be able to see this, babe. Show me. So there's so, the dots disappearing up there and there's the start of mm -hmm. our frame number one. So then once you see a number in the window, that's your frame number and that'll be the first frame. And you want one. that nice and centered... Right in the middle of the window. Yes. Yes. If you're a little oh, bit yeah. past it, then you've then gone too be, far. Yes. And then, this then. doesn't have a uh, any, anything to uh, really kind of check your winding, but the number count on the back of the windows. That's why it has these windows back here. Oh wow, that's 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 going to be on our video. Um, oh, there it goes. Oh, please pick up the phone, mom. Either way. So. Okay, great. <laughs> da 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 da. Hey, so right now um, the film is all wound. 
up in this camera, and um, this is ready to take basically. So um, when uh, you want to uh, talk about, so I just want to talk about really quickly uh, what this camera is really um, very good for shooting. Um, since the lenses are so close together, this is a stereo camera that has a smaller than usual baseline. Um, this is very good for uh, portraits and um, close up shooting. Um, if you want to take, of course, a distance shot, everything that like comes up, as long as you're focused in your foreground, everything thing going on into the back into the infinity will be focused as well um, but this is a very nice camera for close-up shots for portraits um, and for um, just like you know like like close-up subject matter it's a great camera um, just being medium format and um, it's um, the the amount of frames that you get from this medium format roll from this 120 roll um, is um, comparable or it's even more so than if you would uh, run a roll of a 36 um, in a stereo realist, right? But you um, definitely get a lot less uh, waste from the film. Right. And um, as long as you make sure that your um, frame windows are set up um, when you're taking the pictures, um, you'll get a terrific stereo um, uh, picture out of this. The lenses are great on this. Um, we've uh, tested these cameras before. Um, this one happens to have a... Um, a, a cold shoe. Yeah. This has a cold shoe on the bottom where you could attach a flash where you'd have to attach a, an electronic like a PC cord type of flash which we'll get into uh, when we actually talk about this camera or talk about another type of camera that um, uses them. Uh, most of the 50s cameras um, can be updated with modern flashes if you use a PC electronic cord uh, with your flash. Um, you want to tell everybody um, about the um, taking on this. Oh, also, this also has a very uh, unusual feature. This allows you to take um, a stereo or a mono picture um, with either one or the other lens um, by using this uh, flipping switch over here. Well, basically, here. all that that's doing is so this this camera has a double exposure prevention where. Uh, after you pass frame one, now I think that on this one it actually isn't working quite oh, right. Oh, really? Okay. But uh, <laughs> the idea, in theory, the idea is once you get wound to a certain point, um, the um, the uh, fill line will lock, and the purpose of that is so that um, you don't know, double expose your frames. Okay. But the idea, so it'll lock the shutter um, button. And uh, the only way to then expose again is if you flip, flip this back to stereo. up. To, no, you flip it up to single okay. because the stereo thing. Because see, I thought that when I saw this lever initially, that it was going to block one of the one lenses. Of the other, yes. But the thing, it's it's not even that high tech. All it does is just lets you expose a second time on the same set of frames. Mm -hmm. And originally this camera came with So can you a do a double of, exposure on this? Yes, you can. Okay, that's great. Um, I like to do stuff like that. Because uh, originally this camera came with a little lens cap set that hung yes. a little lanyard down this here. Is, this is what this little tiny guy on the bottom is. That's a lanyard holder for a pair of lens caps, which will just hang off the They're screen. often missing on these. This one yes. did come with it, but they fell off. I actually have a little uh, dollar store stereography where I make a pair out of... Um, you know, um, yeah, pops off of a roll. I know, but I miss the originals. But anyway, uh, it, sure then. so yeah, the only thing that uh, that that really does is it just uh, unlocks the double exposure prevention, right. and then to take one you know, single frame on the left and on the right, you would just cover up cover the lens up one, cap and then yourself. cover up yeah. the arc. It, it's not nearly as, as exciting and high tech as I it, thought. It's still, but yeah, it's, it's still, it's still a very, um, uh, not necessarily a very, um, uh, regular feature that. I mean, I definitely wouldn't shoot this camera in single frame. Right. That, that, there's, 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 negating the premise. There's, yeah, exactly. I think that that was more with the idea of, you know, oh, if this was your only right. camera that you owned Although that you the, wanted at, to. At the same time, film is, like, pretty scarce nowadays. If you wanted to, you could, like, really get, like, double the exposures out of a single roll of film. But anyway, let's just talk about the camera some more. Um, this is basically how you're going to be focusing the camera. You basically have a viewfinder right here through your uh, that you look through, that you eyeball through. Um, this is your um, focus. Um, this is your shuttercock. And would you want to, let's take a picture of the phone just right here. Or I'll stand behind it so we actually have a normal picture out of this. And so you caught the shutter. Just make sure to show up everybody what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So just caught the shutter. Right ready to do that? And hold and on, where's, but where's no, the, the thing we're going to do first is we're going to meter. Oh, no, no, baby, no, we're, 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 not, we're not talking about metering right now. We're okay. talking about just the camera operation. All right. Yeah, we'll do metering another day. So show me how to cock the shutter. We cock the shutter, show like me how that. to shutter it. 
Why don't you focus it on me and take a picture? Well, it's I'm a scale behind. focus, so yes. we have to guess what the distance right, is. Right, so now what is the scale focus, then? So that is with a little distance scale. Okay. That is a, a, a top. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the, it's the left ones. Yes. Or left, my left. Uh, and then there's this little wheel yes. up here that we turn to set the scale. It has a little depth of field scale that I usually don't really So you basically have to, to know that you have to judge the distance yourself. You actually have to measure it like three feet equals one meter. So this is an Italian camera. This is measured in meters, correct? Yes. So um, the closest that this can take is uh, what? It's one meter. One meter? It yeah. says 1.2, though. It's like Oh, uh, no. One meter. Oh, one meter? Okay, there you go. So, I'll stand It technically it goes a little bit closer than that, but I, it, it's not really yeah, a measurable so, distance. Yeah, um, so, try to take up to three feet of distance between your lens and your subject matter, at least. Yeah, that's a bad so give, me, one give me a shot. And, uh, now, then, what else do you, So, what else are the controls on here? Also, we have, um, um, film speed and, um... No, there's no film speed on it. There's no film that's speed? That's shutter speed. Shutter speed and what? F-stop? Shutter speed and F-stop. Okay, so there's just shutter speed and F-stop on here. So show everybody those two controls. So the shutter speed's over here. Right it's over here. It's in a sort of archaic 200th, 100th, 50th, one, uh, 25th, 10th, and then P, which is uh, for time, for bold. For bold. I, but in, it's Italian. I don't know what to... I don't know, I don't oh, know what to... Sure, what, <laughs> why not? And then our apertures, which are wide open, we've got 3.5... And then let me show. Let me show in there. Well, I need to read it. Okay. So it's three point five, f four, five point six, eight, eleven, sixteen, and twenty two. Okay, so these are the markings that he was just saying. This is the um, this is the speed, and this is the f stop right here. That would be on your right and your left when you're taking. So now, uh, Sam, let's take a picture. I'm going to stand. How about I stand right over here and you take a picture of me for what you believe three meters, three feet of distance is. Uh, okay, so if you're there and I'm here and no, 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 are you gonna meter? Okay. Well, um, the film's expensive, He's so we got a meter for this every frame. Entire, for, Sam, slide film. Sam's never gonna not meter a picture, and I'm not gonna be able to do any sort of episode where he doesn't pull out a meter. So let's just talk okay, about this a little bit more. A, Go ahead. I'll call it. So these always come with a nice little uh, wrist strap at the top, which spins around. These. Well, are I easy. added that. One. Oh, is this is this one yours? Yeah. Okay. Then never them. mind. I was about to say these usually come original with the camera, but that's actually our own wrist strap. Because um, it has this. Come with? Well, it either comes in a case which has a strap, or mm -hmm. it had this proprietary strap lug attachment that was that up there. Okay. I couldn't tell you what so the modern would, equivalent for that. This would have been the strap be. lugs for uh, the original strap that it came with, or um, in the case. Also I mean, as maybe well. a rolly strap would fit that, but it, uh, this is just easy. Well, snap off a picture so everybody sees. And where's the shutter button on this so it everybody is. can see? Right here. Okay, very good. I have to say that as much as it's a very designy kind of camera and it looks very attractive, I have to be that in my face. I'm brutally honest. It's it's a little I like awkward it. to to handle. Well, sometimes. most stereo cameras really are awkward to handle. You're always going to be shooting like this. Stereo cameras are something that you have to submit to in order to get the results that you want. I know, I know. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's, that's the way it goes. So I usually like to guesstimate about one meter is about what my arm's length is mm -hmm. from shoulder sort sure, of eye finger point tip. to fingertips. So mm -hmm. that's that's a perfectly perfectly cromulent that's 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 perfectly cromulent uh, uh, estimation. estimation. So you're gonna have that's to scooch it. back a little bit, scooch back, scooch back yeah, a little so bit more. You're a little bit we, yeah. We, we go like so that's yeah that's about a meter. Alright, and now you're gonna just press the shutter button. Yep, so I'm go, gonna do three five and a twenty fifth of a second, which should be somewhere in the neighborhood of correct. Okay. Uh I'll just put on my Actually, I'm actually finding that my middle finger is always easier to... Uh, to what? To uh, not to trigger it with than my index finger, because I can almost... Oh, yeah. This sort of That's a good trick. runs the risk of blocking That's the, right. Use your middle thing. finger to shoot the picture with. That's and then I'm kind of bracing the top of the camera with my index right. finger. Right. You're getting, you're, getting, you're getting much better control that way. Here, can you turn a little bit more? Sure thing. A little bit more? Uh-huh. Yeah, whether it turn away a little bit. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like Hold three. Still. 
All right. And so you'll get somebody to pose a little bit still. Um, and uh, that's basically. Oh, that we wind to down. our next frame. Okay. So, Let's see you winding. Come show, show it to me. Now, show as to I recall it, I don't. You're backlit. Oh, your favorite kind of lighting. Mm hmm. Now, as I recall it, this. Yeah, so this one, I'm just winding frame one back up here. Because typically you have to flip this switch here, the single to stereo one, mm -hmm. to unlock the shutter. Right. This one, it doesn't work, which is fine by me. I'm okay. never, we're never going to. We're never going to use that anyway. We're never going to use that anyway. But it does, it, it does uh, create a scenario, though, where you have to be extra positive, super certain that you've wound to the next frame up. See, now, you like to wind before you take the picture. That's I right. always wind after so that I don't forget that. Right. So this is So we have, a, we have a problem in our house when we both use the same camera and pick it up at different yeah. times. So this is definitely a... My camera or your camera. So this is going to exactly. be my camera for the trip. Thank you very much, Sam. And that's a quick rundown, uh, just basically about loading the Duplex Super 120. Um, we gave you a little quick uh, rundown about all the functions and stuff like that, but we'll really be getting into it on another time at the Stereo Camera Show, uh, the 3D Camera Show, uh, which we're going to be filming at the Pin Number Foundation and Highlight Studio, which is going to be a very nice production, um, much better quality than we usually do. And um, I just wanted to give everybody a quick taste of our new uh, 3D camera show that is being shot in 3D. And thank you very much for joining us. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.